Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharm, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Um, CEOs around the world um, are leading businesses that have undergone rapid change driven by the events of the past 20 months, the, the, the pandemic. The same CEOs are having to focus on a set of fast changing risks with operational, regulatory, and cybersecurity risk in particular grabbing their attention. Certification bodies, uh, registrars, for their part, are seeing more focus on risk-based assurance as their clients also react to the past 20 months. Because of this, companies are looking for digital solutions to help with risk assessment, management, and compliance. But what does that mean? What does that look, at, look like? Uh, how are registrars, given their own constraints, meeting their clients' needs. Uh, with us today to address those questions is Paul Butcher, Chief Executive at LRQA. Paul, thanks for joining us. Uh, delighted to be here with you. Um, so what have been the biggest changes that, that registrars uh, such as uh, LRQA have seen in the past 20 months? What has really changed from, from a year ago to now? Uh, I, I think the interesting thing is as a business, we serve customers across the whole spectrum of industry. And so um, we, we, we've seen businesses that have seen exponential growth as they've seen opportunities develop. And of course, we've also had many clients who've been really severely uh, impacted by the impact of the pandemic on their business. I, I think um, the, the biggest change that we've seen is that many of our clients have had to really look hard at their supply chains, um, how they operate, how they work. And that's really made them think about the way their business operates in a very different, different way. Um, I think the other thing is it's very hard as we look back over the last 12 months, 18 months even, um, we, you know, COVID dominates the landscape for businesses and obviously it do dominates the landscape for us as individuals. But it isn't the only big issue that our clients are trying to manage. We've got issues around sustainability and building a future for our planet, issues of social accountability. And then a trend that was already happening but has been accelerated by the last 18 months around digitization uh, of the workplace and how organizations respond to that. So, you know, COVID has been huge, but it's those three other macro trends as well that clients have really been, been seeking to work through and address the, the, both the opportunities and the challenges that they bring. So are, are your clients, are, are they viewing risk differently than they did a couple years ago? Uh, I, I mean, are they maybe looking at risk in a slightly different context does it mean something different to them now i i think what the last 18 months have shown everybody is that almost the worst that you could imagine could happen to your business can actually happen and i think it's made people look far harder at um what might happen in in scenarios that they previously wouldn't have considered so you know thinking about how a pandemic could disrupt your global supply chains and make you have to respond differently in your business. I think it's been um, a real big wake-up call for all businesses. And I, you know, I think of our own business and the way we have had to respond from being an organization that traditionally has delivered our services by being on site with a client in their factory or their business operation. Clearly, as we've moved to remote working, not only have we had to deliver service remotely, we've delivered it to clients and organizations who themselves you know, are working in a remote environment. And that's been, you know, a very significant and substantial risk. I think the other thing that we've seen is uh, that, that the work we deliver has traditionally focused around compliance and how do we tick the box and confirm the compliance to a standard. And actually organizations have realized that that's a part of their profile for managing risk, but they need to think a little bit more broadly and expand out their horizons to look at areas that maybe they wouldn't previously have considered. Okay. You know, you mentioned remote auditing and I know um, uh, we do a lot, we do a lot of webinars uh, very often with, with uh, certification bodies. And one of the questions that always comes up in these webinars is remote auditing. You know, can, how much remote auditing can we do? Can it all, can our entire audit be remote? What is going on in, on that front? How much remote auditing are certification, certification bodies allowed to do, you know, and, and where is this going in, in the future? Been a real mixed response to it. Um, 
when when we moved into the you know the pandemic environment last year we very quickly shifted from almost none of our work being done remotely to around about 50 percent being delivered remotely and that's still holding today for us as a business you know 18 months on um, and I think we've, we've seen a really interesting dynamic, both for ourselves and for our clients, where we, we were very comfortable with the way we work together and we hadn't really thought about the benefits of remote. Um, interestingly, 82% of our clients have now told us that the remote experience is as good as an in-person um, experience. And what we've both started to realize is there are actually some very significant um, opportunities for us to work far more in a global way. Um, so particularly for many of our clients who are global businesses, um, being involved in audits was never possible for them because they were maybe in the wrong country, the wrong geography, the wrong time zone. Now, when we're doing an audit remotely, clients can participate, bring more team members in and actually create a far more effective um, audit program. So I think that's been really important from, from the client's perspective. Um, you know, we, we work across a range of schemes and, I, and you know, we've seen some of our schemes readily lend themselves the nature of the audit really readily to being delivered remotely, um, others less so, um, particularly, for example, food, food safety schemes or critical equipment inspection work that we're doing. The accreditation bodies there have been much slower to permit the use of remote audits still requires to do that in person and are currently working through you know just how does that fit into their future schemes and programs uh, so it's, it's been different across all of the schemes but for us a real strong take up and adoption by our clients so i mean i know that that certification bodies when it comes to to auditing you have certain guidelines that you have to follow right in order to get your accreditation um are you guys constrained in any way in terms of what you can offer, even if you wanted to offer more in terms of remote? Um, are you constrained in certain ways and what would that be? Yeah, we, we, we have been. So a very good example, food safety programs, um, the scheme owners, the standard owners um, believe that it is not effective to do that audit remotely. And so today we cannot, even if our clients wanted to, and we wanted to, we can't do that. Um, but there have been other scheme, scheme owners and um, the IATF, the automotive um, body, is a really good example. Initially, we're very reluctant to work with um, remote audits, but working together with us and other key stakeholders, we were able to show them actually how effective a remote audit program can be, how it could work in their environment. And they've you know, adapted and flexed their rules to actually allow um, a significant proportion of the audit program to now be be delivered remotely. So I think we have an important role to play to work with those accreditation bodies to help them to understand the benefits, how it can deliver a quality audit outcome, um, and also actually help our clients at, at the same time. But I think there's a really important point here, which for us, remote is not an either or. For us, we see it as a part of the audit program. And we think there are, there are some parts of the audit program that really lend themselves to being done remotely. In fact, a, a better and more efficient, but there are some other parts of, of an audit program that, that you just don't get the same quality and, and, unless you're there on site. And you know, a food safety audit is a really good one. You know, as you walk into a factory, you get a very good initial impression of how well run that is, you know, what good, whether good practices are being operated. And it's much harder to get that overall big picture dynamic when when you're doing it, you know, through a camera and, and, and through technology. So what, let, let, let's talk about, you mentioned, um, uh, and I mentioned in the intro, kind of the digitization of compliance and auditing and so forth. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about here about remote audits. And I think when most people think of remote audits, they just think of, uh, some, you know, maybe the quality manager walking around with a, with a, you know, webcam and, and, you know, showing the auditor different things and they're, they're talking over zoom like we are right now and so forth. Is there, is there more to this than that? I mean, let, let's say LRQA, are you guys doing more in terms of simply zoom chats with, with your remote, uh, with your remote clients? Is there, is there some other digitization that can be going on and, and maybe is in development? Well, I, I, absolutely. And I think from, from our perspective, there are, there are two, two ways we see digital transformation impacting our business. I think the first one is the way in which we engage with our clients uh, and, and using technology 
um, to, to help them understand the services that we can offer and how they can buy those services from us. Um, so that's important to us as a business. And, I, and yeah, like many business, working out how we can use digital tools to, to, to make it easier for customers to do business with us. Um, so that's one aspect that we're working on. The other one is in terms of then the way we deliver service. And for us, it is not simply about putting a digital camera, you know, a camera in front of uh, an assessor and, and, and we're good. It's about using technology and harnessing it to make sure that it gives the clients the right experience. So for us, we've, we've created the LR Remote app, which is a secure environment in which clients can upload documents, provide the information. We conduct and record the audit for, for evidentiary purposes, but then actually can subsequently delete those records and that information. Because of course, once you go into a digital environment, you're starting to share company confidential data. And we think that's really crucial. How you manage and control data uh, in a digital environment is really important. And that's been really valued and appreciated by clients. And then the next step is actually how we can use data and analytics into the audit process to actually inform the areas that we should be investigating, the areas that we should report. And I think in a world where our clients' business is increasingly digitizing, we can, we can have far more access to data and information, particularly when it's in a secure environment, to make sure that we bring that insight to how we conduct our audit programs and how we help them to, to manage their business. So for us, you know, digital transformation isn't simply we do an audit remotely. It's about how we change that end-to-end -end experience for the client and build it into new future audit practices as well. So, you know, you, you, you mentioned, I think you, you touched on a, on a key bit here. Typically, you know, in the old days, Two years ago, an auditor would go to a, an auditor to go to a plant. I'm sure you guys have to sign non-disclosure uh, agreements. You know, we're only going to show you certain parts of the plant. Um, it's all self-contained within a building, right? And so now, obviously, like you said, you're streaming, you're streaming video. You know, you're doing all this stuff. You're storing, you know, audit information and records. It's being transmitted, you know, over the internet into servers. Is this making people nervous? Are your clients? a little nervous about that aspect of it? I, I think clients rightly are questioning that. Um, I think the, the good news is our clients uh, recognize that we've brought the right approach to this. And um, you know, we benefit from a strong trusted relationship with our clients. And I think when we launched our, our remote service last year, we didn't just say to the client, here we go, you know, you're now going to talk to a video. We, we, we positioned that whole framework within the app of how we would manage and protect data. And as an organization, we had moved, uh, we'd recognized the growing importance of securely managing data um, in the future. We'd moved into cybersecurity three years ago. We acquired a, a Netitude, a cybersecurity business, because we recognized that if we were going to rely on data, clients were going to rely on us and trust us with what can be potentially quite confidential data, we needed to demonstrate that we understood how you keep data secure in a digital world. And, and having those cybersecurity skills were, were really important to us. And I think it is that ability to deliver a holistic offering of managing data, uh, having the people as well. You know, we, we remain a people business. Uh, we, we, we rely on the expertise of the people who work for us. But when you can't combine that with data in a highly secure environment and a reputation where clients already trust their lab and we can demonstrate you can trust us in a, in a digital world, I think that gives our clients a lot of confidence that they're partnering with the right organization to help them meet the, meet the challenges of the future. Another thing that comes up quite a bit in, in, uh, uh, in, in webinars um, is, hey, you know, we're talking about digitization, you know, you're, you're meeting with us uh, via Zoom. Is it going to be less expensive for us now to have an audit? How does, how does, all, how does this, all this affect uh, kind of the bottom line? Is it, is it cheaper? Well, I, I think, the, the, you know, I mentioned earlier, I think the thing that our clients have really noticed is, you know, there's an immediate saving in terms of uh, them not having to travel to their sites. And more importantly, it's not about the cost, it's the opportunity for others to get involved. And I think clients have realized there's real value in that. Um, I, you know, clearly for us, there's an opportunity not, not to travel to client sites and we're saving on the cost of travel, but we're investing that money in building the digital capabilities that we have. I think the most important cost that we're saving for all of us is the cost of the planet. You know, for us as a business, our biggest carbon 
contributor is the travel that we do. And so, as you know, I mentioned earlier, as we think about the challenges we're facing around sustainability, providing our services digitally is going to help the planet and help you know, us together with our clients to make that contribution to a more sustainable future. So I think it's a really good saving for both of us to go after. Okay. Uh, and, and last question here. Um, how does LRQA and, and other CBs, I, I imagine, um, how do you see certification with all this in mind, with everything we talked about, how do you guys see certification changing in the next, I don't know, year, two years, five years? What, 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 we, what, what will look different, do you think, five years from now? I, I think certification has played a crucial role in helping facilitate the growth of global trade and you know, providing standards and, and of, of performance in businesses or in products that, that organizations can rely on in, in selecting and choosing their supply chain partners. And I think that's been really successful. I think what we've learned in the last 18 months is global supply chains have all sorts of complexity and hidden issues in them that have come up, come to light. And so I think certification bodies like us are going to have to adapt to that changing dynamic, help our clients to understand the risks in their supply chain and be better able to manage them. Certification will play a key role in that but actually expanding that out to look at a broader set of risks and the use of data in particular to help manage that is going to be crucial to help our clients to manage their supply chains and better manage the risks that they'll face in the future. All right. Well, Paul Butcher, uh, Chief Executive of LRQA, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and that is it for today's uh, QDL. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have anybody you would like us to uh, bring on the show, some topics you'd like us to cover, just send your ideas to us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and we will do our best to bring those people or discuss those topics. Thanks for joining us and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.